tactics for gridiron. Ancient ancestor once say, as mind is fed with silent thought, so should body absorb its food. Would not you like him, Jimmy? What? Oh, yes. Say, Pop, I was thinking, I wish you'd let me be a detective. Please, do not imitate vacuum cleaner. Uh, I could probably be the best in the islands with your health. I'm afraid you overestimate ability of parent. No, I don't. And now that Brother Lee is in the New York Art School, I can take his place. What about me? I'm as good as you are any day. Yeah, well, I've been studying up a lot on crime. And look, Pop, I've even had cards printed. Bills also collected? Well, that's just in case I don't get enough murders. Bills sometimes more difficult to collect than murder clues. Yeah, but I know where I can get a swell office. Good. We'll donate one desk and one hat rack to same. <laughs> I'll give you a couple of my old blotters. <laughs> I have some nice rubber bands you may have, too. <laughs> please, please, do not ridicule good intentions of elder brother. Uh, thanks, Pop. Now, about that office again. I don't need a hat rack, but I do need rent money. Then as soon as I get a case, I can start paying you back. And, uh... <laughs> Honorable mother-in-law. Most honorable father-in-law, greetings. Honorable son-in-law, hello. Please partake of humble food? No, thank you. Events of the day have killed all appetite. I have just taken honorable wife to the maternity hospital. Oh, my little lady. Please, please, please. Excitement most unnecessary. Are certain Ling getting best attention? Doctor says she reposes most comfortably. Mm. Why didn't you telephone us? Doctor says do not clutter hospital with relatives until summoned. Telephone will be used as means of signaling family. I'm going anyway. Control self, Mama. Maybe that's them now. Hello, hello? No, goodbye. What, what? Row number, they want fish market. Mm. Give Mama her coat. Look, Mama, you have same experience 13 times. There is no cause to worry. Then what's worrying you? You've been a father 13 times, too. Admit same. But this is first occasion as grandfather. Uh. Hello? Uh, boyfriend calling number two daughter. Wayne, I think we go to hospital. Just did you say, honorable father-in-law. Can I go say to Daddy? Can go to? Come on, Hospitals for sick, not playgrounds for healthy. Please, return to table. Come on, Chief Papa, don't get in the way. Come on, let's go. Hey, wait till I get my coat. Hello? Lieutenant Chan? He just left, but I'll take the message. This is the Homicide Bureau calling. Tell them to go aboard the freighter Susan B. Jennings off Kanea Point. They just reported a murder. Well, a murder? Yes? Yes, sir. Jimmy! Jimmy! Headquarters just called for Pop to go aboard the freighter Susan B. Jennings. Somebody was killed by somebody else. Gee, I better hurry and give them the message. Wait a minute. You're looking for a case, aren't you? Why? What do you mean? Supposing we go aboard and handle this ourselves. Oh, no. It's too risky. Besides, it's Pop's job and he might get awful sore. If you solve the case, he couldn't. Hey, you're throwing over a chance of a lifetime. Just think, it might be years before we get another murder. Maybe you're right. Even Pop would have to bid I'm pretty good if I solve a homicide. Sure, and then I'll have to get to that office. By golly, I'll do it. Let's go. Oh, wait a minute. You're not going. You're too young. What? Say, who told you about this case anyway? You stay here and answer the phone. That's what all good assistants do. I'll see you later. That man was murdered right before my eyes. And you're sure you don't know who he is? I never saw him before he came aboard the ship a half hour ago. Did you see the boat that brought him alongside, Mr. Randolph? 
It was just an ordinary shore boat, sir. After he got aboard, it headed back to Honolulu. Where is the body now? I had it taken below, sir. Well, that's all we can do until the police come aboard. I don't see why this had to happen on my ship. Now we may be tied up here for days. That means we lose cargoes all along the line. Small board on the port side signaling to come aboard, sir. That will be the police. All right, take it easy, buddy. We got you. There you are. Honolulu Police. My name's Chan. Not Charlie Chan. Well, uh... Why, I've heard about you from Singapore to Sweden. I'm Captain Johnson. Uh, Glad to meet you. <laughs> thanks, but you see... Uh... I know, I know. You want to get right to work, huh? Funny thing about you, I thought you'd be older. You've had a lot of experience for a young fella. Yeah. Now, of course, I want to question the witnesses, and then I'd like to see the corpus delicti. You know, for clues and things. Oh, yes, yes. By the way, how many passengers do you carry? There are just six. This is a freighter, you know. There's one of our passengers now. Dr. Cardigan. Mr. Chan. A deep pleasure, Mr. Ham. Not Ham, Chan. Oh, Claire, I'm so sorry. The doctor is a little deaf. Oh. Your pituitary glands are very prominent. I shall have to talk with you later. Good day, Mr. Clam. I think the doc's also a little nuts. <laughs> this way. Approximate time of uh, grandchild arrival? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Mr. Chan. Might be five minutes from now. Might be five hours. Oh, uh, where is telephone? Down the hall, you're right. Uh, thank you. Any report from Lieutenant Chan? No, sir, but the freighter radioed in that he boarded there a half hour ago. I see. Honolulu Police Homicide Bureau. Oh, hello, Charlie. Hold on. Lieutenant Chan now, Inspector. This is Rawlins, Charlie. How's everything going? Very slow. We'll be detained longer than expected. Well, have you got any clues yet? I'm not sure, but intuition and five dollars say it will be boy. Boy? What do you mean? Say, are you aboard the freighter Susan B. Jennings? No, sir. I'm on board maternity hospital. What, again? Listen, Charlie, we called you an hour ago. The ship radioed a murder case just as they rounded Caneo Point. I've heard nothing of same. What? Well, why, they reported you boarding them 30 minutes ago. Would appear someone impersonating humble self. Well, you get right out to that ship just as soon as you can and pick up a couple of men at the harbor. Yes, sir. Mama! Mama! Now, Miss Hayes, Captain Johnson says that you're the only witness to the actual murder. Is that true? Yes, as far as I know. At least I was the closest one. Please tell me all you know. Two weeks ago, the attorney I worked for in Shanghai called me into his office and told me I was to sail the following day on this boat for Honolulu. He also gave me a package I was to deliver to a certain person when I arrived here. What was in the package? $300,000. Gosh! I mean, that's a lot of money. That's the amount, all right. Miss Hayes had me keep it in my safe until this afternoon. What did you do with it then? I waited on deck until this man came aboard from the small boat. Just a moment. I thought you said you didn't know him. I didn't, but when he gave me the wedding ring, I knew he was the man I was to give the money to. Wedding ring? Yes, here it is. I was told he would give it to me as a receipt for the money. What happened then? Just as I was about to give him the package, I, I heard a shot. He looked at me for a moment, you know, kind of surprised-like, and... Then he fell to the deck. I, uh, I don't know what I did then. I guess I fainted. And that's all I know. My chief officer, Mr. Randolph, was the first to reach the body. I got there a few seconds later. Who has the money now, Miss Hayes? I have it. It's locked in my cabin. Would you like to see the body, Mr. Chan? Yes, please. But first take him to the spot where the shooting occurred. All right. Follow me. What are you doing here? You'll have to talk a little louder. You evidently had no trouble hearing what was going on in there. I'm sorry I can't hear you, Mrs. Wayne, but as a fellow passenger, I feel I must give you a word of warning. A murder has been committed aboard this ship, and I should be very careful what I said.
much more about Miss Hayes than you do, but her story sounds fishy to me. I'll check on her after I've seen the rest of the passengers. Yeah. There he is, Cole the mackerel. Oh, what, what, what's that? Oh, nothing. Just ask her. Nothing to worry about. Is it just ask her? Yeah. Oh. I wish you'd hurry up. I'd like to get this case washed up as quickly as possible. I have to unload cargo and clear port before tomorrow. Say, there's not a bit of identification on this man. Look, even the tailor's label's been torn out. Why, that's funny. Somebody must have gotten in this cabin after he was brought here. I think we'd better get up on deck. <laughs> What's the matter with you? There's a ghost in there. Scare my poor animals to death. Ghost? Have you been hitting that bottle again? This ghost never came out of a bottle. Oscar saw it and roared like it was crazy. And I woke up just in time to see it go by. Just like that. What did it look like? You know, just like a, a ghost. What have you got animals on the ship for? I'm taking them to a Frisco Zoo. Then it certainly will be a great day when I get rid of them and you too. Go in there now and quiet them down. <laughs> not me. Not with a live ghost. Wait a minute, Captain. This ghost might be the murderer we're after. Murderer? <laughs> who, who's that? That's the man who was murdered. <laughs> Listen to them poor dumb beasts. They can't reason like us. I tell you. Oh, Bill Juana, come on, let's find out about this thing. Go on. Yes, come. Come in. Hogan. Now, where is this ghost you're talking about? Over in that vicinity. <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. I see nothing wrong here. You will. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Idea. And why don't you put that lion in the cage where he belongs? I do. I'll go in there with him. Oh, I've had enough of this. You've had enough. Uh, if you want me, I'll be up on the bridge. It won't be necessary. Uh, are you sure you saw a ghost? Unmistakably. Don't you suppose I know? <laughs> Look, there it is. No, now. Come on. Oh, no. Not me. Whoever's in that locker, come out with your hands up. What are you doing here? Well, you see, I... Hey, now you get off this ship before something happens to you. But, gee, I wanted to... Don't you realize there's a murderer at large? Sure, and I know who it is. Who? The guy with the thick glasses. Oh, you mean Dr. Cardigan. Yeah, he's been chasing me all over the ship. He has? <laughs> oh, just Oscar. He's a lion. Lion? G -g Gosh, I wish Pop was here. Yeah, so do I. Say, what's the matter? Don't you think I can handle this case? Yes, but just the same, I... Ben. Hey, get in there quick. I got work to do. Can I help? Of course not. This is a man's job. 
I've got part of the crew on deck. Okay, fine. Say, pardon me for giving you any advice, but you better go easy on these boys. Why? Well, you see, they were off duty and I had to wake them up for you. Naturally, they're not in a very good humor, and some of them are pretty tough eggs. But I guess you know your business, okay? Yeah. I'll leave you here with the crew while I round up the passengers. Thanks. What's your name? What's your name, please? Stanislaw Popokowski. Stanislaw, well, we'll skip that. Were you a witness to the murder this morning? Oh. Uh, what about you? Can't any of you speak English? Yeah, buddy. I can. Swell. Uh, what do you know about the murder? Nothing. <laughs> Doesn't anybody know anything? No, Hey, pipe down, all of you. This is one of our passengers, Detective Arnold of the San Francisco Police, Mr. Chan. Glad to know you, Mr. Arnold. Yeah, what's your racket? Uh, why, uh, this guy's a phony. But what do you mean? I've seen plenty of pictures of Charlie Chan, and this chump don't look any more like him than I do. How about that? Uh, I can explain everything. I ought to pinch you for impersonating an officer of the law. But, uh, beat it before I change my mind. Say the word, sir, and we'll put him ashore. Go to it. Gee, I'm sure glad you came. Honolulu police frown on choking bay with bodies. What the thunder was going on here? Come on, you men, get down to your quarters. Mr. Randolph, come on, men, break it up. Who are you? Lieutenant Chan, Honolulu police. Lieutenant Chan? Well, then who is this young squirt? Young squirt, merely chip. Masquerading as Black. Explain presence on board. Well, headquarters called just after you left. I knew you were worried and had a lot on your mind. So I, I thought I'd handle the case myself. I was making headway, too. Mm. Making headway towards ship rail. I'm most sorry for delay in investigation, Captain. So am I. Well, I suppose you want to start at the beginning and see the body, too. I've already examined it, Pop. There's no identification on it. Nevertheless, we'll make own examination. Meanwhile, you would question crew. Yes, sir. Excuse, please. How many passengers on ship? I asked that question too, Pop. There's six. Oh, very clever. There's one now, Dr. Cardigan. But you'll get nowhere questioning him, Pop. He's deaf as a post. Deaf? Yes. Thank you so much. When money talk, few are deaf. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. My buck. <laughs> ah, what's going on here? I caught this youngster climbing over the cages like a monkey and scaring my animals half to death. Who is he? Number five son. What, another? Are there any more? Nine more. At home, I hope. Will explain unwelcome presence here? Uh, I came with Jimmy. Yeah, but I, I didn't know about it. He stowed away. Honest, Pop, I told him to stay home. Now, if you ask me... Nobody's asking you. Go below with your monkeys where you belong. Just as I thought. Familiarity breeds a tent. You'll have to carry on alone. I've listened to enough of this Tommy rot. Thank you so much. Polakai. You will take fugitive from apron strings ashore. Yes, sir. But I've got important news for you, Pop. I know who the murderer is. Who? That man over there. He's been chasing me all over the ship. He's dangerous, Pop. Oh, don't worry. We'll keep watchful eye on Say. Okay. Goodbye. Take me to murder victim. All right, Pop. This is the man she was supposed to deliver the money to, and there's not a mark of identification on him. Except that he was married man. How do you figure that out? Observe, please. Indentation on fourth finger most often indicate wedding ring. Wedding ring? Gosh, I almost forgot. When he came aboard to get the money, he gave this to Miss Hayes as identification. Engraving say, E-H to R-H. Listen, Pop. 
I'll check those initials against the names on the passenger list and... What's that? Pardon me, gentlemen. I thought this cabin was occupied only by the corpse. Sorry to disappoint. One moment, please. We'll explain strange interest in corpse. I am Dr. Cardigan, a specialist in psychiatry. Have humble impressions psychiatry of no value when brains cease to function. But who are we to know the line of separation? The transition is often gradual and mysterious. Sometimes the retina of the eye may even retain the image last seen before death. Have already examined eyes of victim. Really? Stop! Please remove hand from table. I'm afraid you're overly suspicious of me since discovering my pretended deafness. You see, I'm writing a book on psychology. And my little deception gave me an advantage in observing the people around me. I compliment you on your alertness. Most unnecessary. A quality, unfortunately, not shared by your son. Of course, he's strictly a glandular case. But an interesting one. <laughs> Young men suffer from overdeveloped impulses and underdeveloped control. A very clear diagnosis. We must visit again sometime and compare notes. Regret not being present on your first visit here. What do you mean? Button found on floor, obviously divorced from coat. Thank you. Good night, gentlemen. Say, Pop, if he's been here before, maybe he's the one who removed everything from the body. Quite possible. Say, did you really look in the dead man's eyes? Yes. What did you see? Merely a twin image of humble self. Oh. What is name of attorney for whom you deliver money? Mr. John Emery of Shanghai. And name of client? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that. Don't hold out on anything. This is serious. But I really don't know. I'm just a secretary to Mr. Emery. My job was only to deliver the money. Mr. Chan, Miss Hayes seems rather upset. Why don't you let her rest for a while? She told me her whole story before you came aboard, and I think I can answer any further questions. Dear Officer Randolph is always so interested in Miss Hayes. It seems this tropical climate affects some people that way. Of course, I'm not criticizing his romantic tendencies. What right have you to say that? Merely that I think your sympathies are misdirected when they're placed with a woman suspected of murder. One moment, please. Can I explain own presence on ship? Have I not the right to travel wherever I wish? Quite true. But most strange that lady of evident wealth choose humble freighter for same. Well, if you must know, I... I wanted quiet and rest. I recently became a widow. So sorry. Also regret marriage very unhappy. What do you mean? Absence of wedding ring denote lack of affection for deceased husband. Why? Well, I was suing for divorce. May I go now? And give no further testimony on murder case? Not at all. I was resting in my cabin when I heard the shot fired. But that isn't true. Why, you were one of the first on deck after the murder. If you're trying to imply that I know anything more than I've said, you're wasting your time. Mr. Randolph, you were first on scene of crime? Yes, sir. Then perhaps can settle present disagreement? Why, I, uh... Mr. Randolph, you're wanted on the bridge, sir. The ship is approaching her berth. Excuse me, please. May I be excused, too? For present. We'll continue investigation later. Pop, these are the last two passengers. Mr. McCoy and Detective Arnold of the San Francisco Police. So happy to meet honorable colleague. Hi, Mr. Chan. Seems like I know you. I've seen your pictures many times. Not in Rogue's Gallery, I hope. <laughs> no, on the front pages. Incidentally, I'm breaking into print myself. There's the baby who did it for me. The chief sent me over to Shanghai to pick him up. He broke out of jail while waiting sentence on a murder rap. Then we got a tip he's in China, so I hopped over to the extradition papers. Gee, Pop, if this man's an escaped criminal... Don't get any smart ideas, sonny boy. I got nothing to do with this job. That's right, don't worry about him. We were playing pinochle in our cabin when the guy was shot. 
But don't you put handcuffs on him or something? Hey, listen, brother, I can't swim and I ain't never tried to fly. So how am I gonna lamb off this tub besides this flat foot hangs around me like I'd be on a prison wall? <laughs> Always cracking jokes. The boys will love him back at the big house. By the way, Charlie, what do you think of this killing? Opinion like tea leaf in hot water. Both need time for brewing. <laughs> He's terrific. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chan! The money, it's gone. I had it locked in my trunk. Mr. Chan, it was $300,000. I've got to get it back. What shall I do? I hope you're about finished here, Mr. Chan. We've just docked and a gang of stevedores will be on board any minute. So sorry. Must request no one attempt to board or leave ship. Now, just a minute. My company can't afford to have a shipload of freight tied up just because some fool was shot. You take these people ashore and solve your mystery. I'm clearing out of this port tomorrow. Contradiction, please. After case cleared, ship do likewise. You can count on me for any help you need, Charlie. Thank you. Have officers posted on all gangways. Okay, Pop. Please take me to cabin. Get out of here. Now remember, stop anyone who tries to come aboard and make sure nobody gets off. <laughs> Look out, go on. <laughs> Say, what's the matter with you? Those are Pop's orders, not mine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it connected now? Yes, sir. Just a moment, Mrs. Wayne. You can't go ashore. But I've got to get ashore. I have a very important phone call to make. I'm sorry. We've just had a telephone line connected to the ship. You'll find it in the captain's quarters. Oh, Mr. Randolph. You men go ahead. Be right with you. Yes, yes. I've got to get ashore. You'll have to speak to Mr. Chan. He gave the orders. Yes, I know all about that. But you can fix it for me. Now, I'm afraid you're wrong, Mrs. Wayne. I can't interfere with the police. And I wouldn't if I could. Just a moment. Perhaps I can change your mind for you. I saw you give a gun to Judy Hayes just before the murder. You can't prove that. No, maybe not. But it'll be very interesting to try. Now, will you help me get ashore? No. Trunk bears no evidence of forced opening. Lock is intact. Miss Hayes, you are certain money was in trunk? Yes, and it was locked and I had the keys with me. Say you don't suspect me. You had reason for not returning same to captain's custody? Well, I suppose I should have, but after the murder, I thought it would be safer here. After all, I'm responsible for it. Oh, Mr. Chan, you must find it. Also imperative for own reputation to do same. Come in. Well, here I am, Charlie. Got McCoy all tucked away for the night, and I'm at your service. So happy. So this is the trunk they lifted the dough out of, eh? Find any fingerprints? Many. But all smudge. Oh. Well, how about her? You think she's on the up and up? Look here, Miss Donald. I've met your kind before. Well, You're not I bet you have. You know, you wouldn't be the first dame in the world to fall for heavy sugar. If you don't need me, Mr. Chan, I'll go on deck. I've already been most helpful. Thank you so much. Little <laughs> boy, just a little further now. There we are. Now there's the gangplank. Now just turn to the right. That a boy. That's the stuff. Just keep on going, Oscar. Uh, not so fast. Where do you think you're going? Stand aside, boys. Oscar needs fresh air and exercise. Oscar. <laughs> hey, nobody goes ashore, Hogan, and that includes you. Listen, Oscar's got to have a look.
the idea. <laughs> gentlemen, you'll find nothing more illegal here than the two bars of soap by Purloin from the Shanghai Hotel. Did we ask you? Must search all rooms. What's in this thing? Let that alone. What are you worried about, Doc? Don't move it. You'll ruin everything. Oh, yeah. I'll open it. If your clumsy snooping has disrupted my apparatus, I'll... No, it's all right. It's still alive. What's alive? A human brain. Excuse, please. You say brain now alive? Yes. After years of work, I alone have achieved the impossible. It has lived in that liquid for six months. Whose brain, please? That of Chang Ho Ping, the famous Chinese murderer. You see, I experiment only with a criminal brain. I have some beautiful specimens at home. You mean to say you got more of them? That you live with them things? Hey, how did you get a living brain? That, my dear sir, is a secret which will be fully revealed in the book I am now writing. A work that will revolutionize the entire present treatment of criminals. The surgeon's knife, rather than a prison cell, is my solution of crime. Someday, I shall build a magnificent laboratory and call it the crime clinic. And then... Excuse, please. Much money required to make such dream become reality? I have already obtained all I need. So happy. Let's get out of here. Thank you so much. Oh, pardon me. Your friend, Mr. McCoy, what sentence is he returning to? 110 years counting time off for good behavior. Oh, what a pity. I'd hoped for an execution. Too bad. Good night, gentlemen. Hey, you gonna let this guy run around loose? Let's lock him up with McCoy. Most inadvisable for Mr. McCoy's sake. Good night. Yeah. Well, what's next, Johnny? Interview Mr. McCoy. McCoy? Say, so you ain't suspicious of him, are you? No, nah, that's a cold lead, Charlie. Why, he even bunks with me. Making bedfellow of serpent. No guarantee against snake bite. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. How do you do? Say, Doc, you mind looking me over? I think I cracked my head open. What with one thing and another... A pleasure. Take a seat, won't you? Thank you, sir. You say you're having trouble with your head? Yes, Doc. Everything seems to be going dark all the time. Not exactly a criminal formation. Oh, no, no. Rather subnormal. Uh, uh, yes, that's what I thought. How old are you? I'm a 37. Yes, just as I thought. A rare case of arrested development. Say, that, that won't curl my hair, will it? No, it's quite harmless. Just relax. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's nothing the matter with me at all. And maybe all I need is a, a drink. I'm afraid I have nothing here but pure alcohol, in which I prepare my brains. <laughs> you and me both, Doc. <laughs> hey, well, 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 what's that? Oh, come here and I'll show you. That's my brain. Oh. <laughs> I can't understand it. I locked him in just like always. He must have slid out that porthole. Contradiction, please. Porthole locked on inside. Yeah. Wait till I get my hands on that stir bug. I'll teach him he can't pull a sneak out on me. Wait. Trying to take a powder on me, eh? Oh, I was upstairs getting a little fresh air. It's kind of stuffy in here. Please explain possession of door key. Why, uh, I lifted it out of Arnold's pocket. Oh, no, he didn't. 
Double-crossing me after the way I've treated you. Sorry, Charlie, they don't often get away from me. Now, where did you get that key? Pop! Pop! Gee, Pop, I've been looking all over for you. Judy Hayes is gone. You mean escape? Yeah. I was keeping watch just like you said. When Hogan comes along with his lion... Never mind, lion. How long ago, lady, escape? I don't know just how long, Pop, because I was almost unconscious. I've suspected same since birth. Say, maybe the dame took the door ashore with her. We'll soon find out. Hey, you gonna sock me that hard? You loosen up my wisdom, Toot. Pull another boner like that and I'll loosen up that thick skull of yours. Yeah, no one's gonna get wise. You're acting just like a dick. Sometimes you got me believing it. Listen, dope, this Chan guy is no sap. And if he ever gets hep that I'm Mike Hannigan, they're gonna start looking for Arnold's body. That's when I wind up in the hot seat. With you sitting right in my lap. Police headquarters. Gosh, Pop, it wasn't my fault. I was on the job. Inspector Rollins, please. You've gotta believe me. It was Oscar the Lion. Quiet, that... quiet. Hello. Yes, Charlie. Speaking. She did? How did that happen? Unfortunate combination of Oscar the Lion and number two son. I don't get the connection, but I do know this is putting us on the spot. The owners of that freighter are on my neck because we're keeping their ship tied up. And now you let a suspect get away. Mr. Chan, I have an urgent call from the hospital. Will you take it? Thank you. A uh, whole line, Inspector. Hello? Honorable father-in-law? Yes. Say, who is this? Your son-in-law. I haven't got any son-in-law. Get off this line. Ling is resting most peacefully, but has great desire for watermelon. Why call me concerning melon? You told me to report to you each hour. I don't want any watermelon. This is the police department. Hello, Charlie, somebody's trying to cut in on us. Now, just give me the description and name of that fugitive. We have chosen several names. Lotus, Cherry, Lung, if it's a boy. I'm hoping for boy, but uh, I thought you said it was a girl. We don't know yet. Name is Judy Hayes, five feet, five inches tall. Please, get watermelon and get offline. What? No, not you, Inspector. Mr. Chan, they've just found Miss Hayes. They're bringing her in here now. This officer says you're looking for me, Mr. Chan. Say, I can't hear anything. Now, give me that description again. So sorry. Description unnecessary, Inspector. Fugitive now present. Honest, Pop, she did leave the ship. I saw her go. He's right. I did go ashore. And when I came back, this officer picked me up at the gangway. I guess that settles it. It's obvious to me that she sneaked the money ashore with her. You can think what you wish. The money's stolen. Then why did you go ashore? I've got myself to protect. I wanted to phone my employer, Mr. Emery, in Shanghai. Did you tell Mr. Chan about the gun Mr. Randolph gave you this afternoon? How did you know? Please. Gosh, Pop, the same caliber gun that the murderer used. One shell discharged. I never fired it. The gun's mine, Mr. Chan. I fired it several days ago at a shark that was following the ship. Please explain why young lady carries same. Well, Miss Hayes told me about an appointment she had with a stranger whom she expected to come aboard. I asked for the gun myself. That was a lot of money I was handing over, and I was pretty nervous about it. Why didn't you tell Mr. Chan about the gun if it's all so innocent? Well, it slipped my mind and, until you reminded me of it and threatened to tell the police unless I got you ashore. What was urgency of shore visit, please? That's my business. So grateful for cooperation. That is all for present, but any further attempt to leave ship will cause immediate arrest. Oh, Captain. Yes? You offered me a brandy right after lunch today. Might I have it now? You certainly may. I need one myself. Have ballistics check approximate time gun last fired. Also get report from telephone company on Miss Hayes' Shanghai call. Yes, sir. Gosh, things are sure popping now. What's our next move? For you, towards home. Oh, gee, Pop, don't be like that. I've been on this case right from the start and I want to stay on it. Please let me stay. I've got to make a reputation for myself or I'll never get any clients. Now, if you only let me explain my idea. Make short and most snappy, please. Well, uh, of course, it's okay to check the gun in Miss Hayes' phone call, but we still don't know why Mrs. Wayne wanted to go ashore. Maybe she was trying to get away with the money. Already contemplate search of ladies' cabin. Then I'm going with you, because I thought of it too, and a lot of other things. You won't be sorry you let me stay, Pop. You know, two heads are better than one. 
Come on, Pop. Judy. Yes? Why don't you come clean about this whole thing? I mean, at least to me. What are you talking about? After you left the ship, I searched your cabin because, well, I, I didn't want the police to find anything there that might hurt you. What could be there that would hurt me? This. It was hidden in a torn life preserver. There's $10,000 in it. Why, that's part of the stolen money. Where's the rest of it? How should I know? George, you don't think I stole my own money, do you? Everybody does. What's the use of kidding yourself? Oh, don't be ridiculous. If I took the money ashore, sure you don't think I'd be stupid enough to leave this behind? That's what I couldn't figure out. Well, I can. This money was planted in my cabin after I left the ship. It was a beautiful little piece of framing, and I think I know who did it. Oh. This is an unexpected pleasure, Mrs. Wayne. I must have made a mistake. This is not my cabin. There are no mistakes. This is Miss Hayes' cabin, and you know it. Miss Hayes? Then what are you doing here? The same as you are. I don't like your insinuations, Doctor. Let me out of here. I didn't invite you here, but since you've come, there are one or two questions you can answer. We'd better hurry before Mrs. Wayne walks in on us. Did you find anything yet, Pop? Much money. Huh? But all invested in underwear. <laughs> R H to E H. Gee, Pop, the same initials as on the dead man's ring. Must compliment Sparrow with Eye of Ego. Mrs. Wayne. But she's not Mrs. Wayne. This proves she was traveling under an assumed name. Say, I'll bet she was the murdered man's sweetheart. Or wife. That's right. She was getting a divorce. No, she said she was a widow. Lady was speaking truth. She became widow. Today. Boy, is she going to have plenty to explain. Let's go, Pop. Pop! It's Mrs. Wayne. Is she... Strangled by scarf. Gosh, that's awful. Now I don't know where we stand. I figured Mrs. Wayne killed her husband, but now somebody goes and kills her. Look for a pair of scissors. Scissors? Is she stabbed too? No. Only want to cut scarf from neck. Say, Pop, this is Judy Hayes' cabin. I wonder what Mrs. Wayne was doing here. They didn't act very friendly. Gee, but I'd hate to think Miss Hayes killed her. What was that? Somebody was listening. Wait. Caution. Very good life insurance. I've been over this tug from stem to stern and there ain't a sign of that door any place. Did you find anything, Charlie? Yes. Something concerning Mrs. Wayne. Mrs. Wayne? I thought there was something phony about that woman, and that cardigan guy is another one. Now, I ask you, Charlie, is it natural for a guy to travel around with a jug full of brains? Most unusual. You've had men aboard the Susan B. Jennings all night, and as far as I know, the only thing they've caught is a lion. There is no time schedule for solving a crime, Mr. Peabody. But there is for running cargo boats, Inspector. As representative of the owners, I'm giving you their final word. If our ship is held up here another day, we're suing the city. Get me the Susan B. Jennings. I'll see what's going on out there. Yes? I want to speak to Lieutenant Chan. I can't get him now. My ship is on fire. What? What's the matter? The ship's on fire. It's on fire? Why, it can't be. Hello. Hello, Captain Johnson. Hello. I'm disconnected. Hello. Hello, Captain Johnson. Hello. Bring your firehouse forward. Cover your hatches there. Make fast your starboard ports. Stand by your station, two men. 
Get all the passengers on deck. Hey. And man that number two who? Come on, man. Get out of the way, hard order. Much smoke, but no fire. It smells like gasoline, sir. If this is another one of your tricks... Interruption, please. Only connection with Blaze was to extinguish same. Then who did start it? Have not yet identified culprit. <laughs> well, if you can't find out, I will. Quiet the passengers and turn off the alarm. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I said... <coughs> Gee, Pop, now who'd want to start a fire in a bathtub? Uh, I must have dropped them. Please explain reason for arson attempt. Well, I started it to make the murderer think it was a real fire, so that he'd grab the money and tried to leave the ship. Then I'd nab him. It was a trick you once tried, Pop. Remember? Idea excellent, but bait only good if fish bite on same. But uh, somebody did. I saw Dr. Cardigan dragging a big box out of his stateroom. He said there was a living brain inside and... Look out! Thank you so much. Gee, Pop, let's get out of here. Hey, what's the idea? Hey, <laughs> Hey, what are you doing there? Shut up, all of you. I have enough trouble without all this yammering. Excuse me. We heard a shot. Sounded like it came from here. Captain! Only ears detect sound of same gunshot. Come on, come on, before you get hurt. Go on, get down there. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Randolph? There's your man. I caught him trying to go over the side with this. Gee, Pop, the stolen money. Yes, it is, Captain Johnson. It is my money. Please explain possession of same. I just found it, that's all. I saw him take it out of a lifeboat. He's probably had it hidden there ever since he took it from Miss Hayes' room. You're all wet. I just happened to find it. And I'd like to know who wouldn't try to cop a sneak with his hooks on 300 grand. There's no doubt about it. He's our man. All right, Mr. Chan, make your arrest. You can't touch me. I'm in his custody. And that's where you're staying from now on. May I examine key, please? Certainly. Thank you so much. Hey, give me that key. What's the idea? Idea is both you and Confederate are under arrest. Hey, you can't arrest me. I'm Detective Arnold. Contradiction, please. You are Mike Hannigan, for whom San Francisco police search most diligently. <laughs> what are you talking about? Where do you get that cockeyed dope? Reward circular with photographic likeness arrived by clipper plane from San Francisco yesterday. Body of real Detective Arnold murdered by these men recovered from Yangtze River in China ten days ago. Pretty smart stuff pretending to have McCoy in your custody. 
so that the both of you could use my ship to make you get away to the States. Captain! Captain! Mr. Chan! Say, there's something funny going on on board this ship. As if I hadn't enough trouble with ghosts. Somebody drops this cannon down the ventilator. Please. Gun fired in last five minutes. Two shells discharged. Now you've got your evidence. Not so fast there, Captain. That gun don't belong to me. Here's mine. One moment. And that gun hasn't been fired. Look at it. Mr. Chan, will you take these men out of here and settle this case ashore? You have your murderers and your evidence. Now I've got to get this cargo unloaded. So sorry, cargo must wait. But why? What more proof do you want? Proof of fingerprints on discharged gun. You will in ten minutes, please, have all passengers assembled at your cabin. Well, all right. Thank you so much. Dr. Cardigan, a student of criminal psychology would perhaps lend noted talents to final experiment. I should be very happy to do so. Please, run thread underneath blotter through hole. Now, please remain where you are, Mr. Chan. It would seem that a certain theory of mine was correct. Detectives, as well as murderers, invariably make one fatal mistake. You should not have let this gun remain on the desk behind your back. I'm aware of mistake. We all make them. I made one by turning around when you dropped that coin to test my deafness. I found it annoying. But I feel better now. Then prepare for relapse. Took precaution to remove bullets. So that explains your lack of nervous reaction. Just another experiment that has produced nothing. Contradiction, please. Has produced one high-class set of much-desired fingerprints. What's he bringing us up here now? Let's get this over with in a hurry. We'll do humble best. Sit down, Judy. Oh, thank you. Please, will everybody make sounds most comfortable? Miss Hayes, entire amount of fortune intact when recovered from light-fingered gentlemen? Why, why, yes. Are positive $10,000 not missing? What do you mean? Paper money band indicates theft. Very clever questioning, Mr. Chan. Then provide clever answer. Found money band in your cabin. Explain, please. I'm sorry. I can't explain that. Somebody did take $10,000 of that money, Mr. Chan, and hid it in Miss Hayes' cabin. They were trying to frame her, and I think... Say, where's Mrs. Wayne? Sorry, must conduct inquiry without her. What do you mean? She's in it as much as the rest of us. Let Mr. Chan handle this, Mr. Randolph. Mrs. Wayne had no connection with this case. Excuse, please. You experience great friendship for absent lady? Why, not especially, no. Then please explain why you permit her to travel under her assumed name. I don't know what you're talking about. Have reason to believe opposite. May examine lady's passport? Surely. There you are. I don't want you to misunderstand this, but she told me she was very nervous and very worried, and she was just getting a divorce, and she wanted to travel quietly. And I saw no reason to refuse her request. I most understandable. Passport give lady's real name as Hillman. Hillman? Why, that was... Name of murdered man? Why, uh, yes. Did not know Mrs. Wayne was wife of same? No, all I know is I was supposed to bring the money to him. Please explain complete nature of errand. I can't. It was confidential business. You better talk, Miss Hayes. It's bound to come out sooner or later. Well, they were getting a divorce. He wanted to get the money out of China to avoid a property settlement. Why don't you leave her alone? Get Mrs. Wayne or Hillman or whatever her name is up here and make her explain. Regret impossibility. Unfortunate lady murdered. Murdered? murdered? Wait, 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 who killed her? I told you there was something funny going on. An unusually interesting case, Mr. Chan. Two murders and not a single witness. Contradiction, please. 
have one silent witness, murder gun, with fingerprints of criminal reposing on handle, most likely duplicate of same fingerprints now in this room. Are you going to fingerprint all of us? All except Dr. Cardigan, who already kindly donate own fingerprints. You having pad? Sure, Pop. Hello. Who? Who? Go oh, away, busy. Call back later. Hello. What's that? Wing Fu, I never heard of him. I oh, don't know. Please. For me. Hello? Honorable father in law? Yes? I wish to report that Ling is very restless. So is prospective grandparent. Stork evidently fly wrong course to Honolulu. Ling has lost all desire for watermelon and now demands gumdrops. Wing Fu, Dr. Sister, come quick. Excuse me, I'm about to become a father. Goodbye. Tell her to wait for me. Be there in 15 minutes. Hello. Hello. Ah! Ooh, who did that? Turn on those lights. Hey, you guys. Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. I got him, Pop. I got him. You got who? Come on, get in there. Mr. Chan, the gun is gone. I'm aware of the same. What a break for somebody. Now you never can prove who the murderer was. Correction, please. Murderer identifies self. He's now safely imprisoned. Imprisoned? Where? Inside camera. Guilty one took own picture while removing gun from desk. Dr. Cardigan, be so kind as to develop film with utmost speed? Certainly. Jimmy, keep watchful eye on Doctor. Okay, Pop. <laughs> Turn that light off, please. Y yes, sir. person, Captain Johnson. Yes, sir, Captain. Denial is useless. Photograph does not lie. Only you and Mrs. Wayne aware Miss Hayes carry large sum to Honolulu. Mrs. Wayne wanted to prevent husband from receiving same. Money being entrusted to your safekeeping, you saw chance to obtain huge fortune for yourself. Captain Johnson shot Mrs. Wayne's husband when he came aboard ship and hid money in lifeboat where it was discovered by light-fingered gentlemen. He then tried to cover trail by planting money wrapper on Dr. Cardigan and portion of money in Miss Hayes' cabin. Suddenly, Mrs. Wayne become overly suspicious. So he strangled her with scarf tied in sailor's knot. Only positive clue was gun used in attempt upon life of humble self. But fingerprints on gun all smudged and so useless, making necessary trick with camera, loaned by Strange, but most helpful, Dr. Cardigan. So sorry, Captain Johnson. Well, I guess me and McCoy can go, huh? Yes, to jail with Captain. 
What a wonderful contribution to science your brain would make, Mr. Chan. Thank you so much. But for present, we'd prefer to keep same for own use. What a pity. Lieutenant Chan speaking. I'm in jail? Yeah, I said to the one in the trunk of Go, please, exercise self-control. I got to say, Mr. Yelly. It's a boy, Pop. It's a boy. Who's he talking to? I get it. He's having a baby. Can you hear it? Congratulations, Mr. Chan. Contradiction, please. In present case, I'm only innocent bystander. Cooch, 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 cooch. Mm -hmm.